Hi, Steve here, and welcome to this next installment in the Processing Subscriber Images series of videos. Uh, today's image has been sent in to me from Stephen Long, who um, yeah, he basically sent this in and told me that he uh, won his image of the year at his local camera club with this photo. Um, so I think I've got a lot to live up to with uh, how I process this. Um, but yeah, so he sent me the raw file and said that he got a good result uh, processing it himself, but you know, just wanted to see if I could coax even more from it. So you know, I can't promise that I'll uh, match Stephen's original um, Camera Club award-winning uh, image or processing result, but I'll give it a go and see. You know, without actually having seen Stephen's finished processed image, I won't be able to know if uh, if I'm kind of close. Uh, you know, going in the same direction in terms of how it's going to turn out, but. Yeah, this will be my interpretation and yeah, we'll see where it takes us. So yeah, the first thing that I'll just note, actually this is a note to Stephen, the, the first thing that I did was just um, open this up in RAW and straight in the horizon. Um, so yeah, the RAW file had a bit of a tilted horizon, so I've fixed that up already. I didn't think I needed to include that in the video. Um, but otherwise, um, yeah, just some general notes on what I'm going to be trying to do here. So I think obviously we've got this nice leading line going through the image with this uh, this water running down to the sea. Um, so that's that's going to sort of play into this image quite nicely. Um, the exposure is really nice. There's not really any under or overexposed parts. Um, and yeah, the exposure that we're looking, you know, that this image was captured at. It's uh, yeah, it's a nice sort of soft, uh, pastely kind of uh, you know image. Um, but I think what we'll try to do, just, just to kind of accentuate these storm clouds, is just in the clouds we'll try to add a bit of contrast to, um, yeah, to like I say, to accentuate how kind of stormy those clouds really are. Um, but I won't really do too much to try and bring out contrast in the foreground because I quite like how kind of soft it is. Uh, and it doesn't make sense really in this soft, muted light uh, to have really high contrast foreground, so you know we'll we'll kind of yeah you know, we'll we'll work on just lightening this water a little bit, uh, and maybe we'll darken the edges of the uh, sand a little bit, and maybe we'll actually just darken the bottom edge of the image uh, just in a sort of vignette style, as well as the top, um, just to bring focus to the middle section here where the image or where our eye is being led to with the leading line. Um, but yeah, like I said, we won't add too much contrast in. So yeah, okay, first things first, let's, uh, let's think about what to do here. I don't think, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna do any adjustments to the colors. I quite like how this is. It's a nice silvery kind of image. Um, so I'm not gonna adjust the colors. It's, uh, you know, it's on the blue side, but that's, that's quite, uh, yeah, it's quite a nice effect in this, this instance. Uh, so I think we'll just jump straight in to adjusting how the light plays in the image. So I'll create a layer that's just going to darken the top of the uh, sky here. Um, yeah, we can just create a curves adjustment that, uh, yeah, and then drag the curve down to create a darkening effect. Or I've just got in my luminosity masking panel here a shortcut that will create that curve for me. Uh, and then I'll invert the layer mask. Command I on the keyboard or Control I on a PC, and with a white brush, I just whack it on 100% for now because I think that's going to be uh, yeah, that's not that's not going to be overdone if I just go to 100% on the brush. I'm just going to brush this darkening effect into the sky a little bit, uh, and now I will reduce the opacity a bit for the foreground. So I'm just going to darken this bottom edge off. And let's see what that's done. So yeah, we're kind of drawing the attention towards the middle already just by capping the top and the bottom off. Uh, we probably could make it a little bit darker. So we'll just drag that curve even further down. Although this foreground here is getting a bit too dark. So I'm just gonna back that off a little bit. Okay, that's... I think that's done the trick for that. Uh, okay, so let's have a look now at lightening this water a little bit. 
so again we could just add a curves adjustment and push the curve up to create a lightning effect or I've got this shortcut here in the panel um, that will give us that so I'm going to invert the mask and then again with a white brush I'm not sure how accurate I need to be here I could spend a lot of time making a really accurate layer mask but I have a habit of making these videos quite long so I'm just going to do freehand at the moment um, so let's just see if we can squeeze in between here and lighten the whole trail up. Okay, that is all right. Let's maybe just bring it into play here, just in the middle. And maybe just here. So we're just sort of nudging the light in the image, so just darkening and brightening bits and pieces. Um, so, you know, focusing on bringing the attention to the middle of the image. Uh, okay, so that's all right. Now, I will just try one levels adjustment for contrast just to see what it gives us. Um, Yeah, that's, that's a nice amount of contrast. It's overexposing the sky just up here in the highlights. And yeah, that's probably about as far as I'd want to take it. I don't want to really add any more than that because it's going to start, you know, it's like if I just sort of really push this too far, it's, well, it's going to take away from that soft muted light. Um, that you know, the scene has given us uh, to begin with. So yeah, I think we'll leave it probably there. And yeah, I just need to repair these highlights. So I'm just gonna grab a, in the luminosity selection section of the panel. Uh, if you haven't got the panel, by the way, there's a button or a link below the video where you can go and uh, download and install this panel. Uh, it's been designed and developed by me, myself and I, just basically as a helper to really make luminosity masking uh, a lot easier and uh, quicker for people to use. So I'm gonna create a highlight selection here and with a black brush now, I'm just gonna brush into the layer mask of this levels adjustment just to recover those lost highlights. So if I show you what that looks like now, if I just disable and then re-enable the mask. You can see those highlights without the mask, are uh, overexposed, and now they've been recovered when I reactivate the mask. So that's that's pretty good. Um, so let's have a look where we started. So this is the original raw file, and this is just with these three adjustments. Um, yeah, you wanna be careful really when editing a shot like this, not to push it too far. Uh, I think yeah, the contrast, I don't want to do too much more in the foreground. Uh, so what I will do, um, and yeah, this is something that, it's a technique that's sort of useful in, uh, you know, only really in a handful of situations, but this is one of those situations. Uh, so I'm going to use some dodging and burning uh, techniques to kind of manually brush around the clouds to accentuate the clouds and make them really stand out and take on that moody stormy appearance. Uh, so in the uh, finishes section of the panel I've got a button here that's going to give us a 50% grey layer on overlay blend mode on which we can dodge and burn. Now to do that you just add a new layer and set it to 50% grey in the new layer dialog box and then put it on overlay blend mode. But what this gives us is a layer onto which we can use a black and a white brush to dodge and burn. So I'm going to start off with a black brush. I'm going to reduce the opacity to a really low value, something like 5%. And I'm just going to brush into the dark undersides of the clouds that are already kind of dark. And I'm not going to do this super accurately, so there may be a few little splodges that go over uh, and look like I've brushed into the uh, 
into the image but you know the idea here is that you kind of see the technique and then you can go and use it yourself a bit more accurately I guess um, so I'm just darkening those already dark edges this is something that I do a lot in uh, regular landscape editing um, just to kind of make certain objects and detail in images stand out but uh, it's also useful in clouds on a shot like this so again just darkening the already dark undersides of some of these clouds here not going too far I think that last brush stroke went a bit too far uh, so now let's have a look at the before and after on this we can see those edges are getting darker that's good uh, so let's switch to a white brush now and do the opposite thing and just brighten those white edges just with the white brush just to create some definition and really make these clouds pop and again you can be a lot more careful with your brush strokes when you try this for yourself So let's see now if I zoom back out. Let's see what that's given us. So this is before and this is after. So the clouds look a bit more moody and a bit more dramatic. I probably probably would mask this little bit out here at the top left. I don't really like the effect of that um, that specific cloud so let's get rid of that um, okay and that's yeah that's quite nice so you can play around with this effect and uh, see what it does for you um, now looking at this now one other thing that I will do is just have a look at these uh, highlights in the sky because even though we've recovered them with any uh, anything that we've done to brighten the image we've recovered those highlights but they are still probably too distracting for this image so I'm gonna um, add a new layer here onto which I can use the clone tool but I'm going to use the clone stamp on, a, on this layer and I'm going to set this layer to darken blend mode so I'm going to take a big brush now and sample from like over here and I'm going to uh, then I'm going to like paste or clone into this spot at the top over the top of this overexposed bit uh, but because the layer is only uh, is in the darken blend mode it's only going to darken pixels that are brighter than this section that I'm cloning in so that basically allows us to keep the definition in the clouds um, whilst kind of yeah, whilst re repairing or basically filling in the gaps I guess is what I'm trying to say so let's have a look at this now and then we can just reduce the opacity a little bit just to blend it in even more and there that just stops those uh, stops those bright patches in the sky or gaps in the cloud it stops them from being too distracting and taking anything away from the image okay let's have a look at where we've come from so this is the original shot and this is where we are so far now at this point I'm fairly happy with how this has turned out I am um, you know I think I want to sort of keep the essence like I've said once or twice already uh, you know keep the essence of this image um, you know the, the sort of the soft muted light but then uh, bring in as much drama into the sky as we can without kind of without ruining that soft feel to this shot um, so yeah probably wouldn't want to do too much more I guess we could just have a quick look and see what some more levels and curves adjustments would give us so let's have a look if I add a levels adjustment now probably don't want to darken it too much but maybe just brightening the foreground here a little bit let's see if I invert the mask now and then grab my brush tool with a white brush and just brush in again just through the middle a 
Yeah, that's okay. That hasn't sent it overboard. Um, let's see if uh, see if we can do another darkening layer. What that gives us. So yeah, this is probably too dark. I don't really like it when it's this dark. Uh, let's just see what happens if we remove this now from the middle, just to keep the middle brighter. Yeah, it's on the verge of being too much. I'm just going to remove it now. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's probably about all I would do on this image if it were my own. Um, you know, the only thing left to do really now is sharpen and resize and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'll skip the I'll skip the details on that. It's you know, it's going to depend on whether you uh, are going to be printing the image large or sharing it online as to what you do there. Uh, you know how you finish it off with the sharpening and whatnot. So yeah, we'll just leave the image as it is and I'll probably sign this video off now. Uh, I think this might have been one of the quicker videos that I've produced in this series. Uh, really, again, I think similar to the last one, uh, just because we started off with uh, with such a well, an image that's already kind of a long way towards being the finished product uh, before we even load it into Photoshop. So you know sometimes images require a lot of work and sometimes they don't. Uh, I think this is definitely one that didn't really need all that much, um, which is just, you know, testament to the conditions and, uh, you know, to Stephen for taking this image and capturing it so well. So with that said, uh, yeah, I'll sign off and thanks for watching. I'll speak to you again soon.